the biggest challenge right now regarding security? The biggest challenge regarding security? I think the biggest challenge is the need to secure yourself. Because most people have a defined understanding and they think that they're safe because they don't know any better. Most of the security solutions that are out there are built to be very generic. Um, it's, it's kind of like wearing a shirt that doesn't fit you. Even though it's a shirt and it will go over you, it looks terrible. Um, and, and security solutions need to be customized to the business that they're in. Um, and m most people are going out there and they're taking these, you know, kind of overly generic solutions and they're applying them to their environment and it's not working and it's not fitting because they're not applying something that fits to them specifically. They're only looking at things that, you know, shirt or no shirt, not a large or medium or small. And, uh, and it's causing them to overspend and underperform. Uh, and then on the pen testing side, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a language issue. Uh, you have some people say the word pen test and they do one thing and then someone says the same exact word, pen test, and they do something completely different. Um, so part of why we started writing some of the standardization is to make sure that there was a, a common language, whether it was you know, being tested in a certain way or whether it was being called a pen test, uh, whether you said it in English or Spanish or Japanese, it was always the same type. simpler it is, mm -hmm. the, easier, the easier it is to protect, mm -hmm. yeah? So if it's more complex, it'll be harder to yeah. protect. Absolutely. But technology, it's getting harder and harder and more complex every day. Well, I don't know. Maybe I disagree. I think the yeah? reason that they build more and more technology is to make it more accessible to people who can't deal with complicated things. Uh, if you look 20 years ago, using a computer, uh, you had to be at a very, very high level of proficiency to understand how to use a computer. Now we have higher technology evolved computers with a lower level of user now using those computers. So I'd say that it's evolving the opposite way. That as we get more technology and more complexity, it lowers the bar for entry. So now we can have people that are less used to using these things and by not being used to using this device, you're inherently gonna cause more risk to the environment. Um, if, if I don't know that my cell phone has the ability to take down an airplane because it's on, mm -hmm. but I know that if I push a button I could call somebody, then I don't really know the risks that I'm providing my environment, but I know how to use the thing that's in my hand. So I think that as all of this technology evolves, we start to cause more risk to ourselves because we're not, we're not fully understanding what we're using. We're just using it, you know. My, I have uh, nieces and nephews that have iPads. I can say at all that they know how to use a computer, but they can open up YouTube, they can get to the video that they that want, and they, and they love it, and it's great, and they're functionally using this device. Now, I could use that same device to hack a water plant and turn off a city's water. Same device, completely different level of risk. Now, if they went and they followed what I did, they would have no idea what they were doing and it'd cause extreme harm. Mm. So I think that the lower amount of information that we have, the higher adoption rate of the devices creates much more risk because there's so much technology involved that now, by accident, you could harm something, whereas before you wouldn't have even been exposed to the technology. Okay. What I guess I was, I was talking about in, in the conference today uh, was about getting serious about what you're planning on doing. Uh, if, if you plan on dieting, uh, you, you, you can't go about a diet by just taking a pill in the hope that you're fit. Uh, if you want to become a runner, you don't walk every day, you run. And if you want to be secure, 
you have to practice it. You don't, you don't just become secure. You can't buy something. There's no magic bullet or pill or device. It's, it's, a, it's an area of practice, and it's something that we have to do every day. And as you get better at it, you need to practice harder. And as, you get, as the practice gets harder, and as the challenges that you have get harder, you end up growing in that way. And I, I think that so many people have looked at security as, I could buy it. I can take this and I can put that in front of me and I'm secure. And, and that's, that's not, unfortunately, I, I wish it was easy. I mean, I wouldn't have a job, but the world would be a better place. But, but I really think that you know, it's, it's something that we have to train for. And, and what I was discussing there is, is not cutting the corners. If, uh, if you're gonna be a world-class athlete, you can't just train physically. You have to train mentally, you have to be able to eat properly, you have to be emotionally good, you have to be physically good, and all of these aspects all come together. And, and I think with security programs, it's, it's really about training in all these aspects. Not just training in IT, training in business training in how you communicate with people, being able to tie those social and electronic and physical things together to make a program instead of just take this box. ready to protect ourselves today mm -hmm. is completely different from the attacks that we'll be getting tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe? I, or, actually, maybe or, I don't agree with that. Or maybe they're just like, um, I don't know, like the same but with just a couple of different things. I, I think the, the hardest part about security is not being afraid of it. And, and think, thinking that it's hard, uh, or thinking that it's unique and new, which doesn't make it approachable. Mm -hmm. if, the, if, if something's too new, you, you kind of are like, well, it's too new, I don't know how to do that. When, as humans, the same things that we face today on the electronic front, we faced tens of thousands of years ago because you know someone went and took my rock. Right. You take my data, you take my rock, it's in the cloud, it's in the middle of the forest. All of that's exactly the, the same. same. And, and I think that if we, if we can break it down to those rudimentary philosophies of protection, it makes it quite easy. You know, my, my data is in the cloud. Well, you know where it is. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you call it. You call it your bathtub. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you still know where it it's is. There. You know the people that are trying to get it. You know how that they're going to get it. And you know already how to protect it. You know, it's, it's we get in our own way because we overcomplicate it. And because we overcomplicate it, it doesn't make it approachable. If it's not approachable, we don't do it. So I think that if we, if we could just use some basic protection methods, and, you know, if I don't want you to have my phone, going and locking the front door is the wrong place to start. I should take the phone and lock it. Exactly. Right? But instead, what an enterprise does, I don't want you to have my data, so we should put a firewall way the hell out in the middle of nowhere. What did that do? Nothing. But we feel good. Well, that's, the, that's contradictory to everything we've learned as humans. So I think, that, I think that there's ways to secure it, whether it's right now, today, on this phone, or whatever the next iteration of awesome technology that we're gonna build is the human race. But the protection, the way that we do it is gonna be exactly the same. We might implement it differently, you know, it might be a phone or I might have to put a password on something instead of physically putting someone else in front of the device when I can't be in front of it. But all of those methods, I think, are approaching instead of, you know, oh, we have to buy some billion dollar complex solution that we don't know if it works or not. And then we don't know how to test it, so we'll never know if it works. It's like, you know, if we were, if we were race car drivers, but we didn't know how to drive a car. Mm -hmm. So all you could do was get the most expensive thing, put it in front of you, and then the person who sold that to you says, that's the fastest car on the road, and you go, okay. Mm, I got it. And that's it. You never get in the car. You never drive it. You never even know if the thing works. We just have blind faith. And I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, I'm a, I'm a strong supporter of proving it. Whether it's the simple method, whether it's the complex method, that doesn't matter to me. It's about results. If you can prove that it's protected, it's protected. 
If you can't prove that it's protected, then we need to either prove it or it's not. I personally think that investing in people is much better than investing in technology. Right? Uh, the power supply on a computer is going to burn out much faster than the power supply in either of you. And so if I wanted to talk about the empirical nature of dollar investment, spending $3,000 on you versus $3,000 on a server, I'm going to get much more out of you. Yeah. I'm going to get much more out of you from a passionate level. I'm going to get more creative ideas. And I don't have to worry about configuring you. And, and the user error that helps with that, you know, so which which a lot of our, our risks that we have are user error. It's, well, I didn't know that you could turn on the password. I didn't know that you could change this or that or turn this off. Um, so I think that as you educate people, you can actually have a much smarter, much more well configured, much more highly architected environment opposed to, you know, I guess what the new philosophy is, right, which is outsource things and buy more technology. And we can prove over time that by outsourcing, by investing less in your people and investing more in technology, gets you closer to getting compromised. We can show it. We can show it every single year we lose more money because of compromises. And every single year we spend more in our IT budget on capital investments of technology. So those two go hand in hand. If you spend more on technology, you will get compromised more. That's a fact. I think my, my recommendation more than anything is to know what you're getting into. So blind adoption of technology, I think, is the biggest problem our industry has. And, and I say that even from the security standpoint, very, very empirically. You know, how many people put in a web application firewall that don't know what it does? How many people put in a firewall that don't know? So I think that as we adopt new things in our environment, we need to learn about them. If that means investing in your people so that they can know or that you can know in the solution, I think that that's going to protect us more than anything else is just knowing what we're doing and having a good, solid reference. The more complicated and complex the technology is, the more vulnerable it is to primitive attack. And that's what we're going through right now. Right? We have all of these very, very complex systems. And what's the easiest way to attack it? Walk in the door and steal it. People have already forgotten that basic physical security even exists because they're so focused on this highly complicated application attack and this and zero day and APT and this and that, that they forgot to lock the door. So I think taking that just kind of holistic approach is it's reasonable, and we don't we don't need to be so distracted by all the shiny things that vendors put in front of our faces. What's it?